Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 Like cool. that, then we can just. just <laughs> in Zimbabwe and also beyond the borders. And today we'll be speaking to an artist who doesn't really need an introduction. He has uh, made so much impact on the literally in the um, spoken word front and currently is working and based in Zambia, but he still continues to work uh, in Zimbabwe and particularly in uh, Bulawayo. And um, speaking to Bekumu Samoyo, uh, who goes by the name the protest poet. Unjami. Diripo. How are you, my brother? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you so much. It's great to have you on Ear Ground. For a very long time, I've been tracking you and seeing your moves. Uh, you've been shaking the space and now you're doing it in Zambia. How is the experience there? Yeah, the experience is interesting. Um, First of all, the learning of uh, how the arts can be an industry that is viable in, uh, in Africa, not uh, only particularly in Zimbabwe, and making comparisons here and there, and also learning a bit. So the experience has been very awesome. Wow, great. But uh, let's track back where this journey started. You grew up in Gwanda, right? Yep. Yes, and uh, growing up in Gwanda, what was the influence like? What was your childhood like? It's, it's always uh, these funny journeys that uh, when you narrate them, they always sound monotonous. And mine is not actually uh, the most amazing of all stories. Plot. I grew up in Gwanda in a rural area. I grew up seeing uh, poets like Ngendi and hearing Albert Nyati on radio hearing Zwake Mbuli, then I thought one day I can. And when I went into the city, mm -hmm. that's all I preoccupied myself with. So I can frankly say I loved and fell in love with poetry from a very tender age, not only as a means of storytelling, but also as a means of healing myself. Like um, poetry has always and given me this opportunity to speak to myself, speak, speak uh, truth to power, empower other people using it. So. I grew up in a rural area, going to Blawayo. You are a new guy, you are speaking Sutu, and the other guys are already more on Debele side, and Blawayo is a big city, coming from a yes. small city. So the experience, uh, I can say, taught me a lot that uh, the world actually grows bigger the more you try to enter it. Wow. And, 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 and as your world grew, your projects also grew. You grew from being a poet to uh, so many things. You started writing and you've written and published articles in newspapers such as the Newsday, and you've read uh, articles that have been published also in the Chronicle. But apart from that, you also become a development worker. Did you go through any sort of schooling for all of this or you had to discover yourself along the way? On writing, I wouldn't want to lie. When it comes to writing and the creative industry, it's all self-taught. And it's about passion and how I've been passionate about the subject and using uh, uh, art as a communication tool. Yeah. Uh, as a development worker, yes, I went through school. I did uh, my first degree in media and communication. And then I also pursued my master's in uh, development studies. I also pursued another master's in uh, project management when I was in Pakistan. But all of it in my practice, I've always fused in the creative industry, the creative works. I've been using art as a mode of communication in most of my developmental work. Since I worked for National Youth Development Trust in Blawayo, I worked for World Vision in Gwanda District. I also worked for Action Aid International in Pakistan, and wow. even when I joined uh, Zambia Global Platform. So it has been using art mainly to communicate key issues. After I've seen that there's a big gap a void in between the young people's issues and aspirations when it comes to communication. Uh, if you can't use creative means, people are tired of workshops, people are tired of boring conferences. Yes. So I always found that using art, which is self-taught, has always uh, bridged the gap and created me as a better uh, worker, especially in development work. So that's, that has been my path and the juggle in between 
arts and uh, being a development worker. Wow, great. And um, I remember the first time that I, 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 I noticed you was when you caused a bit of trouble and you were in trouble because of your content, because of your work. Uh, and how was that experience? You were making poetry and that poetry unsettled the system and you ended up getting arrested because of that. Could you just take us back a bit into that whole experience? It, it, it's amazing. There's a quotation that says, um, the world in, is in so much chaos because we have not paid attention to our poets. Yes. You see, um, I believe, I believed since I left Gwanda that my poetry needs to speak truth to power. And whoever in power must also have the ability of speaking either their fears, their joys, but through poetry. Uh, I did my first play called uh, 1983 Years Before and After, which got banned and got me into a lot of problems. Uh, the play was a poetic play uh, done by Jahunda Theatre Kamban. You know, uh, the play was speaking the story of um, a man that I knew close to me for many years, and he told me about his tribulations, and there was no any remorse from the government to deal with the issue of Gugurahundi. I think my play was the first play, a poetic play, to be allowed to be aired in Zimbabwe or to showcase in theaters, though it was banned. But um, that experience of being arrested, to me, I always say it's no one's intention to get arrested or it's no one's uh, intention to provoke powers that be, but it's everyone's intention to express themselves. So what I only did was to express myself, express the grief of the people I spoke to through poetry in a play, and it got me there, where I found myself uh, under the state uh, state uh, state uh, state, uh, state guidance. The guidance. You know, I don't, don't want to call it arrest, but it the state guidance where they would like, no, don't say this, say it this way, don't say this. Don't. Well, but anyway, if you want to guide me as a state that has failed on your own, it becomes very unfair on my side because I'm just a poet and a creative. So whatever I, I challenge perception towards subjects. I don't want to create animosity or commotion. So that's how I, I, I found myself interacting with the state more. But however, as the protest poet, I stood and I still stand my ground wherever I go. That uh, poetry, like in the past, all poets for kings, all poets for chiefs, never only praised them. They would actually speak truth about their conduct so that they learn a few lessons from what the poet criticizes of them to correct and become better leaders. So any leader who suffocates the creative voice, either it's music, poetry, writing, is a weak leader because we are all made by our creatives through imagination in society. Wow, great, great. And um, do, do you still, this, because this happened during the Mugabe era, do you still feel sense that there's a poet? Yeah. Uh, with the new dispensation, it's uh, it's an old it's an old ordeal, man. It's a new old dispensation, maybe we can say. But um, I'm happy because uh, when Mnangagwa came in, um, thank you to Elder Devs Guja. Devs Guja through theater in the park, he, he managed to put my play again in theater in the park after three years of it uh, never being showcased to a live audience. And uh, lucky enough, uh, uh, Mr. Nare from the Ogano National Healing Reconciliation. Yes actually attended uh, the play at uh, theater in the park. So with that in mind, I'm saying maybe the current system or the current regime may not be more interested in the physical, um, in the physical torture of the creative, but it can be technical by not giving it more space or paying attention to it. You know, the greatest torture to a human being is to ignore yes. them. So I think the current government actually is not even putting funds for arts, we have been seeing, okay, we have got Culture Fund, which is not a national arts project, but the national arts itself is just a body that seeks to regulate more of our conduct as creatives. So I think it's still the same to me. It's still the same. Uh, things are worse because the economy is not even aiding an artist to produce new work. So meaning the sanctions are much harsher now because creating new content becomes a little bit a tedious process. So I say to me, it's still the same. 
tactics right. might have changed. Wow. Okay, quite interesting because also I think um, there, there, there are quite some positive developments. I hope they work the talk, but uh, just two days ago, the president announced that um, he acknowledged that the creative sector has for a very long time been ignored. And now the Honorable Kiss de Coventry has been given the mandate to come up with a strategy for the rescue for the creative industry. So we need to see what's going to come out of it. And there was also an Indaba in uh, Koblawa sometime last year. Uh, and I hope, you know, something positive is going to come out of it. But now talking about um, you being based in Zambia, you're heavily involved with uh, a very successful poetry platform. Can you just give an insight into that? Um, I, I want also to maybe to echo your words that you said that maybe there are positive moves. Uh, but Plot, I want to disagree a bit to say meetings and conferences have always been held. But mm -hmm. action, I listened to His Excellency when he spoke uh, about the arts industry and that I have, I have uh, advised Kirsty Coventry to come up with a concept or a proposal. To me, actually, it, it's, it's all about planning to plan, you know. It's an issue of where uh, Kirsty Covent is going to the drawing board to plan how to plan until maybe her tenure is over. But anyway, the, the, that the president recognizes the importance of art during this time is what I can applaud. Because yeah, frankly absolutely. speaking, plot, as we sit in our houses currently under lockdown in different spaces of the world, the biggest product that is being consumed is art. People are watching movies, people are listening to music, people are watching poetry. To me, I say art is actually a bigger player currently during lockdown sessions. People are on their TVs, people are on their phones, they are looking for entertainment. At least it gives us a little bit of a way as a positive during this time to say someone cannot ignore the role of artists uh, in this current time. And maybe this is the only time when we can start to utilize and take advantage of our of our relevance in society. Wow. So uh, I echo your words in that. Yeah, positives, positives, a little bit, because conversation means more in the African context, because you can always refer to it and say, ah, you say this, you say this. You say that. So that's where we are. Yeah. So as, yeah, as, as creatives. Great, great. And um, I was asking there about the current the initiative that you involved in uh, the Smash Poetry uh, platform. Can you just give a bit of insight into that? What Smash Poetry is a Southern Africa um, spoken word uh, movement. We came together after we saw that um, poets were not getting much of an like exposure to different platforms outside their comfort zones. Yes. Poetry has always been there. I wouldn't want to take credit of saying we started anything new. There have been poetry movements all over uh, Southern Africa, all over Africa, all over the world. We know it from Def Jam internationally. We have seen Word and Sound in South Africa. Yes. We have seen Amagamba in Harare. We have seen House of Hunger. We have seen Mlomuako in Blawayo. We have seen Poeta Vango in Botswana. We have seen um, uh, Trials in Namibia. You know, when, you came, when I came to Zambia, I found bittersweet. I found uh, uh, color culture. They are already poetry yes, movements. But what has been lacking, which Word Smash brings in, is to allow poets to be autonomous and also spread their wings across the region and um, cross-pollinate talent. Uh, since we came in, we've managed to go to festivals in Malawi and send poets to Malawi. We have a partnership with Indwasa Arts Festival, which is uh, currently going on since uh, two years ago. We have sent five poets to Zimbabwe, and this year we are running a study poetry slam of 16 countries coming together in Blauayo. We have uh, done partnerships with um, Literature Fest in Harare, with uh, uh, Elder Chirikure Chirikure. We have done a poor, a Maung Festival in Botswana. To me, this is what Wet Smash is all about in Southern Africa, to say we want to open more synergies and collaborations between poets of the region, not only in one particular country, but want Zambians to collaborate with uh, uh, Zimbabweans, Zimbabweans with uh, Namibia, Namibia with Botswana, and that. I believe right. this is how we can grow spoken word. But the bigger dream is to chase after what Def Jam poetry were doing in the 90s, creating spoken word artists who can transcend to become hip-hop artists, 
and also record music or support the writing of music that makes sense in the industry. That's um, our bigger dream. So our role has been being a catalyst, you know, allowing creatives to collaborate and, uh, and work together across the region. And uh, I don't want to lie, we are very happy of uh, the five festivals that we have interacted with yes. and the linkages and the growing uh, link links that we are finding and the appreciation. We always do most of our activities straight on Facebook. If you check yes. daily, we post a poem at 1 p.m. This actually has created this kind of relevance uh, and also a regular interaction with our different audiences. So that has been what Wet Smash is all about. Um, great, great. Wow, thank you so much. I mean, it's great work that you're doing there. But do you see poetry growing in Zimbabwe? Uh, yeah, uh, I was asking there about the growth of poetry in Zimbabwe. Do you see the art form growing? I think plot. There is, um, there is a new trend on how spoken word is being treated in, uh, across the world, and particularly in Zimbabwe. I don't want to lie. Yes. Every festival is a spoken word component now. I think I've seen that. Mm -hmm. Minus that, civic society and other platforms are now giving spoken word artists a little bit of leeway. This yeah. I can say, I want to pay tribute to the elders that went ahead of us. I want to pay tribute to people like Chirikure Chirikure. Yes. We actually challenged the status quo of that poets and poetry can be incorporated in many academic spaces. People like Albert Nyati, mm -hmm. people like Memori Chirere, you know, people like Batsirai Chigama, people like Comrade Fatso, outspoken. Because the way they fused the poetry into the academic spaces and also into the civic spaces is amazing. So there's a, a growth and the spoken word has already became a culture that has been embraced. Maybe where we can always say, we can argue on, on growth is, is it making economic sense to be a poet in Zimbabwe? Yes. Because there are a lot of young poets that I've seen interacted with in festivals, but is it making economic sense? Like, yes. are these young people being able to pay their renters and maybe also attain money for data and for basics? Maybe that's where we can argue. But I want to confirm and actually say, we have a growth in the spoken word as in Zimbabwe. You might have actually yourself interacted with a lot of other young people, you know, uh, who do spoken word. I've seen on your channel on Ear Ground, yes. reading of yes. poetry. I've seen Zawanu performing. To me, that's actually a, a show of growth. That spoken word is being appreciated at different intervals. Uh, that's true. That's true. Great, great. And um, now uh, you're under lockdown. You've talked about the consumption of poetry. Yeah. Uh, where do we go? What's the yeah. future post Corona? Where do you see poetry and the creative industry growing, uh, going just after Corona ends? I, I can be a little bit controversial to say every disaster presents a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. I can confirm that the consumption and network, network penetration in Africa has grown so wild. And access to internet has actually improved. And online platforms are the future, let's yes. not lie. Um, in our Facebook page, we have about 9,000 followers at Words Much Poetry Facebook page. Uh -huh. And each time we post a poem, we have over a reach of around 4,000. And we can actually look into views in hours or minutes of views. Mm -hmm. Each poem, no matter how unpopular the poet is, gets around 200 views, which are complete two minutes views per each poem. So I think post COVID-19, mm -hmm. it's important for creatives that we start to understand the use and the relevance of online platforms to market and sell our art. I remember that you in the past always say, you know, YouTube is paying a lot of people, That's controversial, true. useless uh, bloggers like um, uh, Gambagwe Media, where you yeah. know that there's nothing truthful that they post. You have other spaces like ZimEye. You can actually tell that they are making money on platforms with uh, recycling information. 
But as creatives, we give uh, original content. So I think creatives post COVID-19, it's very important to invest mostly on digital spaces and uh, utilize digital platforms of sharing and selling and partnering with network providers so that there can be online payments and stuff for the arts online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Wow. And uh, the poet industry, like you said, it's growing. We also see you know, the cross pollination with hip hop and other art forms. Um, what is your word to a poet who is possibly uh, somewhere where they don't see so much opportunity right now and they aspire to become a poet? My advice is um, keep writing, mm -hmm. keep performing. Right. There are two things in life. Either an opportunity comes for you or you chase or you after an opportunity. An opportunity. So, um, as Wordsmash and the team that is at Wordsmash, we always say, guys, let's be checking for any event. We have disrupted a lot of events in yes. Zambia, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Namibia, where we say even if your program has no poetry, yes. we will always offer you a three-minute to five-minute poem to be part of your program. Yes. Experimental, but also trying to find, to add value into your program. So poetry has been part of our society for a long time. Adverts are better done using poetry and spoken word and stuff. So any growing poet who is out there not seeing opportunities, I say, the opportunity is in you first. What are you passionate about? Each subject that you address passionately will always yield results because that's how you can only get attention. You can only get attention if you are passionate about the subject that you want to address. But young people with no subjects or themes to address Yes, can find it difficult to fit in, but I think the relevance of poetry, as Chinyo Achebe always says, as for us sake is like uh, deodorized dog shit. So meaning if you just do art and say, I'm doing as for us sake, then you are on the wrong platform because art is an industry. Either we are making money, making social consciousness, creating an impact on issues. There is something that you must be changing or shaking. You can't just say, I'm just doing art because I love art. Those are actually people who drag us as artists and creatives backwards. Arts is not arts for arts sake. Arts must have a mission. So every young person that is growing, every young poet, I will say, find purpose. Great, great. And uh, right, right now, um, we are under lockdown, and you've talked about the opportunities that are there. Um, and you as a poet, like your, yourself as uh, the protest poet, uh, where do we see you in five years from now? Looking into the digital platforms post lockdown, yes. plot, uh, first of all, mm -hmm. we want to launch a weekly poetry show mm -hmm. that will run hopefully forever, where poets will perform live on a social media platform mm -hmm. for, for the next possible future as a, as a stage where they can actually put up their poetry and be paid for doing that. Because we're actually looking into partnerships with different organizations to say, you are failing to do your workshops, which have been boring over and over the years. You are failing to do your conferences. But we can get your people through an online platform and everyone else that you are targeting on our Facebook page by getting poets perform live to those audiences on a weekly basis. So we want to launch an online poetry spoken word platform that will run every every week then we also are looking forward to say we want to be the go-to place as word smash but also as the protest poet i see myself curating international engagements online you know uh, for different poets from all over the world because this actually presents us a good opportunity that you are far away wherever you are and i'm in zambia but mm -hmm. see we will be able to we are able to communicate live with our audiences as it is happening. So in principle, in five years, we will be managing and curating our shows online as it is happening now. More online work than physical spaces work. Yeah. Great, great. Wow, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I know you're a busy man and it was an honor to have you on the program. We we'll definitely want to speak to you more and continue talking and following uh, your journey and the work that we are doing, uh, not only for Zambia, not only for Zimbabwe, but for 
uh, Southern Africa as a region. Uh, but before you go, if you could get just a 30 second snippet into one of your poems and then we end. Sorry, Plot. Yeah, no, I was asking if you could give us a 30 second snippet and then we end the conversation. <laughs> okay. I know I quote you. I, I, will, you I, will, I, will, I will. I love. I love. I love to quote a a, a Winky D where he said, "There is no style for free." When I, I give give us a, a free style, I'm like, "There is no style for free." So, but anyways, so because the president, because the president said he's uh, instructing Kesti Coventry to come yes. up with a proposal uh, yes. for him to fund the ads. Yes. I want to write, uh, uh, say a poem to you called Promises. So it's called oh, Promises. Okay. It's not 30 seconds. It's very short. That's why I'm talking to you ah, okay. so that I, I'm not wasting much of the time. So Promises. They forget the promises they made. These leaders, they lead in paths they failed. These leaders, they promised to take us to the land. These leaders, they lend, they destroyed. These leaders, they lead through promises. Only they promise promises to promise more promises of wow. promises to us. So. On that note, uh, we promise to keep giving you uh, some great content, uh, a lot of awesome content. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, Becky Ahmed. It was really nice speaking to you. And I really appreciate you taking your time to be on the plan. Until next time, let's stay tuned. Thank you so much, Plot. Peace. Great. Thanks. So, comrade, don't bother in energy.